Hello class, welcome to 8.1 Magnets and Electromagnets. This is the start of the new chapter all about magnetic fields and um, this first lesson is mostly a review from grade 11, so hopefully you've seen this stuff before. To start off, magnetic field is just like our gravi uh, gravitational field and electric field. Um, we call this one B, like this, and it's like the other two fields. It's an area that experiences magnetic force. Just like our gravitational and electric fields. An area that experiences magnetic force. So we've got our magnetic field lines and um, these are, well, they're lines showing the strength and direction of a magnetic field. And you should have seen these in grade 11. In fact, um, last chapter we looked at electric field lines. Um, and, and gravitational field lines you should have seen first, actually. And so you can see to the right here, we have a picture of a north-south magnet. Um, I mean, all magnets have a north and a south side. And you can see that we have our uh, magnetic fields all leaving the north side, going around, we've got a little compass there, going around, going back into the other end. Right, and so it's always directed north to south, and um, of course you know that the field lines can't cross, the closer together, the stronger the field is. That means that right at the ends here, where you can see there's a whole bunch of lines all stuck together, very close together, that means it's going to be strongest there. The magnetic field is strongest there. Okay, um, so in magnets, we have some interesting stuff. Magnetic poles really affect how we talk about magnets. So we have a north and south magnetic pole. North and south. And we know that opposites attract and likes repel. So that's similar to our positive and negative charges for electric fields. But now we're talking about north and south poles. Still, opposites attract and likes repel. All right, um, we've got another picture to the right here of just another magnet. You can see that this is now um, uh, a magnet that has the north and south both on the bottom here. And so you can see that the, the fields, well, even in the top magnet, the field inside the magnet goes from south to north, and outside it goes north to south. You can see in this, this one down here, we have north to south outside, north to south, and inside it's going back from south to north. So that's, that's how we talk about magnets here. All right, and Earth. Earth is a big, giant magnet, basically. We talk about Earth's magnetic field. Now, one interesting thing is that we talk about the North Pole and the South Pole, and we, we talk about those geographic poles. The North Pole, well, that's where, where Santa lives. That's where, you know, all those sorts of things. It's, it's north of here. But one interesting thing is that the magnetic poles, the North and South magnetic poles, are not equal to the geographic poles. So if I'm talking about the North Pole, well I'm probably talking about the North Geographic Pole, whereas the North Magnetic Pole is not the same thing at all. What we have actually is that the Magnetic North, Magnetic North, is, well, it's near the geographic south. So in fact, completely opposite, it's, it's, uh, it's flipped. Our south pole is the magnetic north, and the north pole is the magnetic south. Um, and I say basically, it's, it's near it because they're not exactly at the same location. The magnetic north is not right on geographic south, and it's not even the same every year. The poles move around 60 kilometers per year. 
So wherever the, the magnetic north pole is right now, in a year it'll be 60 kilometers from there. So it's always moving. Now, what are the causes of both Earth having a magnetic pole and why is it moving? Well, it's still not really answered. There's no definite answer, but right now we think that it's probably because of the Earth's molten core. And I'll put a little question mark in there because we don't really know for sure. But Earth has a big metal molten core. It's always moving around, and it makes sense that, um, that that's going to cause some magnetic fields. It's a very complex situation, but that's what we think right now, is that this swirling metal inside is causing a magnetic field, and it, um, it's moving. Now, actually, the magnetic poles every once in a while, every you know, tens of thousands of years, just completely flip, so that what is the north magnetic pole all of a sudden becomes the south magnetic pole instantaneously. It's kind of interesting. All right, um, now, a compass. Compasses have been around for a very long time. It's a way to tell north and south, how to navigate. And a compass is just a magnet that aligns with Earth's field. So we've got a couple pictures here. Um, we had a compass, a picture of a compass up here, and just underneath there is a picture of how these magnetic fields work on Earth. I, you can really see that we've got the north pole near the south, and, um, and it's sort of going around these magnetic fields. Okay, and one more thing that we can say about Earth and its magnetic field is that we have these cosmic rays that are coming in towards Earth. They're these charged particles, so they're Cosmic rays are charged particles. Ooh. Let me just fix that there. Okay, charged particles in the atmosphere. Um, that are affected affected by the magnetic field. So we have protons and electrons and all these sorts of things whizzing in towards Earth. Once they get near Earth, they're affected by its magnetic field. And there's a picture to the right here of we have a positive Q charge and you can see that because of the magnetic fields, it ends up going on this little spiral course, and really um, its, its movement gets, gets affected. And you can see that over to the right here, left and right, if we have a positive charge coming in straight towards the magnetic field, what happens is it gets redirected um, straight towards us, and going this way it would get redirected away from us, so that they don't actually enter the Earth's atmosphere at all. It's kind of neat. Now, in the north and south poles, we can see this happening. It's called the aurora borealis. So I'll put that here, aurora borealis. And that's the northern lights. So if you've ever seen or heard of the northern lights, that's what's causing it. It's these charged particles that are um, being affected by Earth's magnetic field. Okay, um, I'll, I'll warn you right now, this lesson doesn't have a whole lot of math, um, but there are some really important things that we're going to learn here, which are the right-hand rule. You may have seen these in grade 11 again. We'll take a look at them now. So, electromagnetism. What is the principle of electromagnetism? It is that moving electric charges moving electric charges produce a magnetic field. So when you have a, a positive charge, a negative charge, it's moving, it makes a magnetic field. So electric and magnetic fields are very closely linked. And it's a pretty interesting discovery. It, it means a lot of things. It, it lets us do some very interesting results. Okay, and um, that means that if we have electrons, or we have current flowing through a, s a wire, a straight conductor, 
it's going to produce a magnetic field. We have a rule for it, the right hand rule, right hand rule for a straight conductor. And here I'm just going to say C below. Because I've just copied in the definition there for you. I don't want you to have to write it out right now. But the idea is if you write if your right thumb is pointing in the direction of the conventional current, so we say positive charges are flowing in this direction. If your thumb's pointing in the direction of the current and you curl your fingers forward, your curled fingers point in the direction of the magnetic field lines. So you can see there's a picture to the right here. We've got our hand. I stick my thumb in the direction of the current. And then I curl my fingers like this. And you can see that I'm curling them in this forwards direction, um, clockwise, counterclockwise. It depends what you're looking, which way you're looking. That's why we have this rule, so that you can really fairly easily say if the current's going this way, this is the direction of my magnetic field. So it always goes around in this circular direction. Okay, so. It's a very, very useful rule. You'll see it all throughout university. Anytime that you see a physics test, you'll see people just sitting there writing their test, and then every now and then they'll sort of look up from their test and put their hand in front of them and curl their fingers, and it looks really silly. Um, but that's, that's what happens. And you'll, you'll be doing that, I'm sure, on your test as well. All right, so that's for a straight conductor. But it's kind of interesting what happens if we take one of those straight conductors and twirl it around into a circle. And we have a few pictures here. So again, we can use our right-hand rule. We have our current coming in this way. Current's coming in this way. So that means that if I stick my thumb, curl my fingers, you can see that it goes around in this, this direction. And same here, it goes in this direction, this direction. You can see, actually, it always seems to be going from the inside out, in this case. Inside out, inside out. And so what you get is the picture to the right here, this, this picture over here. Um, where the net field is that straight in the middle, it's going straight up. And then you can see that it's sort of causing this, this curl all the way around. And, um, and so that's interesting. We, we like to be able to talk about that and what happens when we curl things that way. You can also see that right in the middle of the coil is where the field is strongest because the lines are closest together. And so that's kind of important. And then it gets further apart as you go further away. And then this last picture is just another idea of how to look at that, how to sort of look at this circular conductor, stick your finger there, your, your thumb, and see the direction. Okay, so that's one loop. And uh, we can say that for a current loop, it still follows, still follows the right-hand rule. For straight conductors. for straight conductors. And one important thing is that the field lines, the field inside the loop, the field inside the loop is stronger, which you can see because the lines are closer together. Great. Okay, so what happens is um, if we take one loop and instead we want to sort of extend that, we want to loop it a whole bunch, coil it around. And you can see a picture just below of what I'm talking about. It's called a solenoid. If I take a wire and I make sort of a coil, a spring out of it. And if I send current through that, then something interesting happens. So this is called a solenoid. This is where we have a conducting wire a conducting wire wound into a coil. Wound into a coil. And we have a rule for those as well. So you can actually see the right-hand rule a few times. We have different right-hand rules for different situations. So again, I'll just say C below. We have the right-hand rule for a solenoid. You can see it means it says that if you coil the fingers of your right hand around a solenoid in the direction of the conventional current, then your thumb points in the direction of the magnetic field lines in the center of the coil. Okay, so um, let's just take a look here. We have our current. Our current is coming in this way, 
you can see that if I follow it, it's going around like this and back around like this. And so we need to curl our fingers in that direction. So if you curl your fingers that way, they only should go one way. You shouldn't be able to do it the opposite way. So if you curl that way, you'll see that your thumb here, your thumb is pointing in the direction of the current, um, or sorry, of the magnetic field inside the coil. So you can see that we get a, a direction of the field going that direction. And we say inside the coil because, well, that's where it's going here. Outside, you can see it's doing the opposite, just coming back this way. Good. And so that's how we uh, figure out a solenoid. And we can use solenoids to create what, what are called electromagnets. And, um, and so an electromagnet is just a magnet that is controlled magnet that is controlled electrically and our example here is the solenoid so what we've just looked at here is if we have this coil of wire normally it does nothing as soon as I send a current through it it turns into a magnet and it can become a very very strong magnet depending on what we do and I've written here factors. So these are the factors that make it stronger or weaker. So um, if we have a solid magnetic core within the coil, so for instance, if we stick a bar of iron inside that coil, well, that makes the field increase. The field goes up. And other things that uh, make the field go up are when, if you have more coils on your solenoid, if they're tighter wound, if they're packed closer together, these coils, tighter, tighter wound, and if you have more current running through your electromagnet. These will all make it much stronger. There's lots and lots and lots of applications of this sort of thing. It's just a magnet that you can turn on with electricity. It's pretty amazing. So one example is you have big magnets to pick up cars. I don't know if you've ever seen that in a TV show or a movie. You've got a giant magnet that picks up these cars. Well, of course, that's a big electromagnet. Another example is uh, doorbells. Where um, the field pulls a lever against a bell. And there's all sorts of applications. I'm just going to put ETC, etc. there. That's it. That's the first lesson. Like I said, there isn't really much math in that one, um, but I hope you enjoyed it, and in the next one you'll be able to do a bit more application.